Right. Welcome. I've pressed a button. Oh, I hope it goes well. <laughs> oh, what do we have here? <laughs> so what's all that about then? What's all that about? Well, Mr. Tip Fox, one of the high honchos in a non-hierarchical structure, is giving 10 D-tube tokens for anybody that puts one of these pieces of paper up in front of their video and puts it on YouTube. A do D-tube. Oh my God. That, that, does that need an edit? Oh, I said God as well. Oh my. Oh. Hey, this is not going well, is it? <laughs> We're going to continue. Huh? Got to be serious. Looking at the camera now. Got to be serious. Right. Well, as he has been so generous to make this offer. Ah, it, uh, then I need to sort of, uh, well, what's going to be the next video? It's like I'm bursting with material. Hmm, yes. Well, I've decided to give a few words on my experiences with meditation in the spirit of pass it on. Mr. Tim Fox has been very generous with us. So it's nice to put something wholesome back that may help others. Yes. Because whatever else I say, although it might be completely uh, incoherent and possibly not of much value, it is based on my personal experience and fundamentally I'm being honest. Very important. Personally, I'll watch anything if I think it's being honest. I might not watch it twice and I might watch it ever again. But honesty is the the basic uh, entrance fee. <laughs> right. So, meditation. Om. <laughs> I'll talk about that later. For me, I've been doing it a baby about five years, not every day, sometimes every day, sometimes twice a day for quite long periods. Um, but it has always helped. I've even said to people that if it was a choice between never smoking weed again or not being able to meditate again, I'd actually give up the opportunity of smoking weed again. That's pretty strong stuff now. Hey, tokers. <laughs> but it does. And I wish I knew about this when I was younger. I think it would have transformed my life. Right. So what's the basics of meditation? I've learned this, by the way, from Deepak Chopra. He's got a great video. I'll try and find a link. Unfortunately, it's on YouTube. Um, it's called The Soul of Healing Meditation. I did it hundreds of times and it's really good. But the idea with meditation is that you actually don't think, which is a lot harder than one might imagine. You try and there to be silent and there's a little voice going, oh, what about this? What about that? You just want to smack it down, be quiet and be quiet. And then, oh, it's quiet, isn't it? It's really, really difficult. But in any case, how would one basically meditate to begin with? Well, first sit down. I don't think the position particularly makes a difference. I often did it just sort of like chilling out. And to begin with, just concentrate on your breathing for about five minutes if you're not used to doing it before. And try not to think of anything. Shut down the internal dialogue, all your little voices and opinions and observations going on inside. That's very difficult to do, but don't beat yourself up about it and just go for it. And also, you can separate the mind 
from the body and the spirit. There are three things. Things tend to come in threes. I like threes. And there's always movement. So you can look upon the little voice and when it does creep in, more or less it's moving. That's just the movement. It's chattering away. But I'm in my soul. Not actually being part of it, as it were. My awareness being in a different place. The same with uh, the visual effects. Your eyes will be closed. You'll see all little things happening and patterns and God knows what. Just look at it as motion. When they, It's funny. With all this motion going on around you and you think, well, how can I be still? Well, motion is relative. There's no sound if there's not silence. You're the silence. That's the peace. So when you're trying to be quiet and all this is going on, Realise that inside you is the reference which is not moving, which is still. Which is probably like we think we're the same person as when we were seven years old or 20 years old. Whatever age. So sit down, do some breathing, slow breathing. Just concentrate on the breathing. It might take your mind off the... The talking that will be going on but even then i suppose you're concentrating on breathing not uh, not actually on doing nothing as it were which is very hard but in any case once you've got through that bit a very very helpful thing to do is first is to express gratitude for everything yeah <laughs> gratitude for what one might ask well i would be going there Thank you for the sheets I'm sitting on. Thank you for not being wet like it is outside. Thank you for my cup, which is dirty over there. Thank you for the dishes, which are also dirty over there. I'd thank everything for everything. And it's great. Thank yourself for, your, for the oven. <laughs> thank yourself for the guitar, for your microphones, for everything. And afterwards, after the meditation's over, wow, all of a sudden you see the oven, you think, I'm going to clean the oven. You do it spontaneously. Jordan Peterson, when it, with his, was it 12 rules for, uh, I don't know, whatever it was, being a better man or whatever it is. I'm, I mean, I liked hearing him speak and it was very interesting what he said. He said, go clean your room. I thought, oh, yeah, 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 that's that's good. I'm going to clean the van. I was living in the van. Lovely van. Um, but I didn't. <laughs> but with the meditation, I did. And nobody told me to clean the van or the oven or do whatever or go and clean outside did it spontaneously, without guilt. That's a little bit of a diversion, isn't it, all this? But no, no, the gratitude business. Yes, so say thank you for absolutely everything. And you'll notice at the end, you suddenly want to start doing something. You'll, you'll pick up the guitar, you'll start playing, you'll start doing stuff. You'll also be in a calm state of mind without this going on because you've been chilling out for some time. Normally it takes me about 45 minutes, but time is not important in that sense you could do it in five minutes you know um it just depends how you get on i think the important thing is to actually make it a habit and part of your life i did that and then i've done less but because it has been a habit you haven't forgotten it and then when you do need it or just spontaneously decide to meditate it comes back and you reap you reap the benefits and you probably get into another phase and other levels like with anything else well the other thing after saying thank you maybe have a few more breath uh, uh minutes breathing just chilling out check, checking out try not to speak try to be silent and then do the opposite do the other side forgive Everybody and everything, including yourself. But I, uh, as often happens, there might be somebody in your life that's bugging you. And this is actually really hard to do, this part. A bit of a bitter pill, but you go, it does help. 
any bad feeling or, or I don't know, nastiness, competitive nastiness going between the two. This sort of like nullifies it your side. It doesn't push it back onto them. It just neutralizes the bad vibes coming in. And it inhibits you sending bad vibes out. But the thing to do uh, is the hard bit. When they suddenly, oh, that's really bugging you. You've got to visualize them. You've got to see them. That's the last thing you want to do, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God, this person, I can't stand them. And there you are. You've got to imagine their face. I'd like to say it gets easier. I'm not, uh, I suppose maybe it does because it works. Your experience tells you that, so maybe it does. But in any case, you look at that vision in front of you and you forgive them because you realise the rationalisation for this so it's not just hippy-dippy love. <laughs> you realise that from their point of view, they're doing the best they can. So just accept it. Focus on their face. Accept that from their point of view, they are doing everything they can, can for the, in the best way they think or in a way they think appropriate. When you've done those two things, the gratitude and the forgiveness, you find there's not a lot left going round in your head. Eh? I mean, you're not going to be thinking about politics. You even have to think of all these politicians that you hate and all these people on TV that drive you up the wall. You've got to do them as well, eh? not just the one person. Do the whole lot. And you do yourself. Forgive me for not washing clothes and being a lazy bastard. <laughs> what else is going to be going round in your mind then once you've done all that? So that naturally empties the mind of much of the rubbish that's going on. So you've said thank you. You've forgiven everybody. Well, then in this particular meditation, the soul of healing meditation, it, well, at this point, I'll describe this, this Deepak Chopra, soul of healing meditation. But I think at that stage, when you're in a calm, empty state, then I think, I don't know, it's almost like that's when you can start typing. That's when you can start programming or maybe... But I'm not really qualified to talk too much about that. But that's possibly where you would drop in the, the any intentions or desires. But the thing I liked about this Deepak Chopra meditation, the first time I ever did it, like anybody else, I was very sceptical and... Possibly even a bit ashamed to think, my, I'm so weak, I got us, I'm going for the hooby dooby stuff. But what he did was, once you got to this stage, the breathing, the gratitude, the forgiveness, a little bit more breathing, you're nice and calm, said, now concentrate on your heart. Put your awareness in your heart. Try and sense it beating. Lots of people when I tell them that, say, what, feel my heart? What, have you never done a run and felt your blood? Yeah, yeah, of course you have. Well, that's what we're talking about. Just feel it beating. Boom, boom, boom. Stay with it for a bit. Just observe that mentally. Don't make any comments if you can. You'll still be trying to shut yourself up. <laughs> well, you do that. But then once you've got it, right, you're boom, boom, in a way like a goodie. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. You're really in your heart. Then he said, 
And this is a miraculous part. This is what really, really got me. Yeah? So now move this sensation from your heart into the palms of your hands and feel the hearts beating by the circulation in your heart, feel them in your hands, feel them throbbing. And they did straight away. It was magic. It was magic. It worked. It was really, wow. And then almost immediately he said, right, now move the throbbing of your heart into your face. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it worked again. Wow. Now, if you'd actually asked me to do that before this process, I wouldn't have been, had, had any idea to do that. And he actually explains that physiologically, you've actually moved the blood supply to your hands, giving it more blood flow in your hands or your face, depending on where, where you're putting your awareness. It's controlling, was it, the autonomic nervous system, which is supposed to be, uh, you know, not tweakable manually. So that was the, that that really hooked me when something worked like that and it worked instantaneously. Subsequently, I've tried it with my ears because I'm half deaf, which is great for a musician. I don't have to suffer as much as everybody else. <laughs> um, actually, they did start throbbing and make funny noises even. I'm not sure I actually hear that much better yet, but still, continue. But once I did hurt my foot, and uh, I thought I wouldn't be able to dance at the fiesta tomorrow because I was in a nice sunny climate, El Centro del Mundo. Well, I went to bed that night and the foot was really hurting and it was bad and I could hardly walk. But when I was uh, uh, going to sleep, I sort of like did this with my heart and I had this bit throbbing away like a good one. And it hurt a bit. Hey, yeah, it was throbbing away. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, and when you do the, uh, for the healing bit, you've got to recite three things, apparently, according to Mr. Dr. Do Dr. Chopra. Love, knowingness, and bliss. But actually, thinking about this, love. Well, I go in there, my foot's hurting, it's pounding away, but... It's being done with love. So it's the best intentions, eh? So, maybe a romantic thought, but the chances are it's going to do good. It's not going to do harm, is it? If it does, it's unintentional harm. This is love harm. More like a love bite as opposed to a bruise. <laughs> so love, yes. Knowingness. I'm not sure that's actually a word, but okay. Knowledge. So that throbbing that's been done with the best intention, from love, is actually knowledgeable. It knows what it's doing. <laughs> it's not like this presentation here. Yeah. <laughs> Although, if I get 10 DTC for this thing, I'm not sure I will actually now be classed as an amateur. Because I think they're now at 20 cents. Well, they were 20. They even peaked at a dollar. God knows. But in the future, actually, uh, I rather think uh, it could be good. All the same. So, this action, this throbbing, this blood flow is being done with knowledge. So the body knows what it's doing. It's giving its nutrients. My father was a doctor. He even used to give us, give people pills, you know, when they had bruises. I think they were called chimoral, literally to increase the blood flow. What that, yeah, that, this is what this is doing. You're redirecting the blood flow. So you're increasing the blood flow to wherever you need the, the uh, healing to take place. Your body will be taking all sorts of nutrients and God knows what healing properties and healing substances right where it's needed and you're controlling it with your mind that's pretty magical well obviously you can guess the end of the story on this one the next day i was dancing perfectly there was nothing there in the morning i practice with mosquito bites as well when i'm in spain oh it's itching ah ding ding right throb love 
knowingness, bliss. See, that's the other one. Things come in threes. It's but good intention. It knows what it's doing. So, hey, be happy. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Bliss. Be in the bliss. You know, you're not questioning yourself then. You're not questioning the technique. And it does all work. Right. Well, the little revelation which I wanted to share with you, which is the main reason for um, choosing this topic today, is today I did have a meditate and I had a little breakthrough, as people, as one does, in whatever field of endeavour you are operating. I had a little breakthrough. I find it a lot easier when you're trying to sort of like turn everything else off and go inward to your, to the soul. And by the way, your soul is the bit in between you speaking. When you say something here and you say something there or you think something here and sing something there, it's a little bit in the middle. That's you. <laughs> that is. It's nice. It's a silent. You're in the gap. So I used to think of it like rugby. Right there in the three quarters, passing along between the outside centre and the wing, and ho oh, oh, there's a gap, and I'm away. Yes. So go for the gap. <laughs> I think I've lost my drift now. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're on the tip. Right. So we're in, in this silence. I helped. If you actually put your awareness or try to concentrate, not in the front of your head, this is with your eyes closed, you know, and all the little bits going on with your eyes. Not there. Out with your ears. And possibly even behind you, right? And all of a sudden, whoa, you can expand out or like an expanding stereo field. And you get out there, oh, that's the bit. There's nothing going on there. That's really nice. That's, 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 that must be what they're talking about, I was thinking. But then it just collapses. You lose it. They say, go, find this place and rest in it. How the hell can you rest? You're there, oh, this is great. Gone. You can't rest. Well, I, I think I did today. Well, as you're putting your awareness behind you, obviously you're moving it because you're starting off there or in the head or wherever you are. You're moving it. It's going away, going behind you. And then you sort of like get in the zone. And then you're in the zone and it goes. Well, what's changed? You've stopped the movement. you stopped the expansion. When you start here, you're expanding away. You suddenly get into the zone behind you, the peace. Well, then don't stop. It's like surfing. Da, 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 da. When you're on the wave, go for it. Da, 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 da. Don't change anything. Just da, 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 da. All right. You carry on. Where to? <laughs> Infinity. You're not going to run out of universe. <laughs> so you just carry on. Just have the sensation of ever widening, ever widening, widening. And then you can actually chill out in the ever-widening movement. Again, you're the reference. So that was my little tip for you meditators that are not being able to get in the zone. And, oof. well, rest is, is the best word. Just rest in it. Be in it. Be in the calm. As opposed to just having glimpses and flashes of it. So that's really what I wanted to share with you today. Rest in the expansion. And do, do give the meditation a try, eh? There's nothing like it to 
get rid of the crap of daily life. A fi last final example that I often tell to people. I lost my credit cards, bank cards, driving license, all in a little thing, you know. Couldn't find them. Yeah. For anyone, that's a disaster. Well, for me, it certainly was a disaster. I couldn't find them. Okay. Lurked everywhere. Took me about half an hour. Of course, I did find them. Everything's all right. But it's not all right. That stress was bugging me all day. Well, you know, it was bugging me. You couldn't get it out of your mind. I did a meditation. It took about 40 minutes. It's gone. No more thinking about the credit card loss. What could have happened? What oh, what should I have been doing? Oh, gone. And I don't know anything else that acts in the same manner. As I say, for me that would be more valuable than a good old spliff. What a note to end on. Well, good luck to you all. Thanks for listening. I do hope this has been coherent and, and of use. So I better sign off now. Many thanks once again to Mr. Tim Fox on DTube. Check it out. It's an independent uh, platform. And I think it's, was it decentralised? It does have a token structure, so there will be potential f for uh, producers to earn. And this whitelist is designed to stop people gaming the system by copying other people's material and putting it on and getting credit for it in that way. Um, so it seems to be going well. I hope it continues. I obviously put these videos on other platforms as well. So it might be funny having a DTube um, plug on another platform, but at the moment we've got to throw them up in the air and see which comes down. Right. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you're all happy, fine and comfortable. Fine. I think I maybe do some more on this meditation because I do like it, actually. <laughs> okay, then. Cheers, dudes. Bye-bye.